What is going on guys? This is going to be a requested video that I've had a couple of times lately. So my old Vertex painting video is not working kind of. There's basically some things you need to set up to get it working now that is not shown in the video. So I'm basically going to sort of reshow how to do it and there's some minor changes I have also in this version. So I have a scene open that I'm working on and I've basically used um, sort of painting puddles, I've only used a very simple method and that's what I'm going to show you today. I will release another video soon to show how to do it with height blending. So it'll basically make it look like water fills up gaps in like cobblestone and stuff. But this one is just a basic flat sort of painting puddles. So if I come over here, so first off go mode, mesh paint. We'll select this, so they've changed all this as well. Paint, and we could take away the puddles or if we reverse, we can paint them back on. You can obviously change the strength and stuff to make it a bit more subtle. Change the size. You can like paint around. And we already have a wet surface, so we're basically just painting more wetness to it and sort of taking away normals. You can do the same thing over here. Take it away. Or oh, they're both white. How did that happen? Flat. We'll paint it back in. I did it along the edges because it made more sense on the road. So, going back to the project, I will be showing how to do it in. Over here, that's what it looks like, not in the dark. And same sort of thing. I could paint the puddles on, I have a very low thingy. Paint those puddles. Like that. Which looks pretty nice. And this one, I have it tessellating, so it slightly dips in. So, if we actually sort the colours around, I can show you. It raises up where it's not damp, just because that's where the puddle will sort of be uh, filling up. So, getting started, show you what the texture looks like. We got this, and it's not too hard. Basically, all we're doing is we're taking um, a paint value from the vertex color, and we're just making it so you can swap over from two different versions of the texture. So, let's make a new material. Uh, Making the file that this is in. Concrete tutorial. Load that up. And then go boom. Don't really need the AO displacement if you wanna if you just want it to look a bit more 3D, but I don't really want that for now. I'm not too fast. I will grab these two. So nice and simple. There's three of the textures. And we'll start getting to it. So if you were to set this up normally, obviously you plug this in, plug that in, what's this one? I right, normally plug that into normal, and then plug that into our roughness. I've got an 8K texture. You obviously don't need it that high res, I just for some reason have mine that high res. So first thing we need to get vertex color. There you go. Which is your painting. Select which one you want. On my old tutorial, I showed you alpha. The reason alpha doesn't work anymore for those of you who are confused why the last video doesn't work, is because if we go to swap here, so you see like we swap the color around, it doesn't swap your alpha values. For some reason, the standard alpha value is one for both of them. And it kind of makes sense because why would the other one be transparent? But it's still a bit annoying because it means you have to manually change that, then you can start swapping. So that's the only thing wrong with the last video is all you had to do was change the alpha value manually, but you know what? If that's how they want to do it, that's how they want to do it. All right, so now we want to get two variants. So for the first thing, when it gets damp, it gets darker. So I want to do that. So up to a multiply. Have about, you know, half the color. So we're, multi we're multiplying it by a 0.5, which is going to basically reduce that to make it darker. Plug that into your LERP. And then we want to plug this into B, just like that. So our A is our darker version and our B is our lighter version. And then we want to plug this into there. And that's our color done. Just plug that in. Make another lerp down here. So L left click for a lerp if you don't know how to do that. So this is our roughness. Same thing, we want this at the bottom, but then we want a variant that's going to be shinier because obviously it's going to be getting wet. Don't need to use the base, we can literally just go one left click and plug that in. Keep that at zero, unless you want to 
make it less shiny, but I want it as shiny as it can go. But that's our roughness. And lastly, our normal map. So, it doesn't move weirdly. So, a couple of ways to do this. The easiest way, um, because we just want the... We just basically want there to be no normals. We just want it to look like there's water seal on top. And, yeah, that's it. The easiest way to see that's free left click and you get your free vector. One in blue, which will give it a completely sort of flat surface look. So, where it's wet, it'll be flat. L left click for your lerp. And again, this and A, this and A, this and B. I'm terrible at remembering which way the lerps go. <laughs> I seem to always get it wrong first time and have to correct it. All right, and then plug that into your normals. And that should be done. Last thing you can do, like I said, with the tessellation to make it like bump down, is you can come into here, right in tessellation, go flat. If you one left click you can uh, so you can one left click and make a one parameter or s left clicking you automatically get your scalar so showing you right click that convert to parameter and then we can call it whatever we want this is going to be how tessellate it gets so how many extra vertices it will add to our surface um i just call it tess multi not multi multi plug that into our Tessellation multiplier. And then we just plug this into a multiply. Like that. So right multiply by dragging it. You can right click, multiply, or you can press M and left click. And you can get multiply. Put that into here. We'll have this as a tessellation amount. And I'll default it at about. We'll go over the top just to show you what it's doing. So we'll go point at minus eight. That's going to be very over the top, but we can change it in an uh, instance. But I just want to show you guys it working. And then lastly, multiply that one more time by a vertex normal WS. And then plug that into your world displacement. Yes, not world position offset, world displacement. Click apply. So. First thing you need to make sure is whatever you're bringing in is high enough um, poly count, right? So if I come into my project right now, if you were just doing it on a plane and your plane was like this, it will just, I'll show you in Unreal as well, it will just paint the corners. So quickly, either whatever software you're using, you can either just uh, smooth it but in some softwares, this will round out the edges. It doesn't in Maya, so just like that. And now when you paint it, it will paint the puddle and these points. Or if you'd like, you can, if you're in Blender, for example, you could go to Insert Edge Leap, which is Control R in Blender. And then you could just scroll up in Blender to get the edge loops. And like that. Then import that in as your high poly plane is what I usually call mine. Now, if we grab this and plonk it on, make sure I've applied everything. Yep. Now, you can right click it and convert it to material instance, which will allow us to change basically those things we turned into parameters. Okay, now that's loaded. One thing that I realized um, already that's going to be a mistake is if I go to paint over it. So make sure you've selected what channel you're using. We're using red. We go to paint over it, the puddles are going to be raising up. See that? Obviously not what we want. We want the invert of that, essentially. Um, so all you have to do, whenever you want to invert pretty much anything, so this is a good way to just show off the invert node, to be fair, is come in here. We want this to invert what it's doing. So instead of plugging it straight in, we'll one minus it. So just write one, and it will come up. If you right click and write one minus, it's literally called that. There you go. Pop it in and plug it in. And plug that in instead. And then when you plug that in, and when you apply, you'll get, it will go down instead of up. All right, and we're back again. So as you can tell, like I said, I made it very high value to really over-exaggerate tessellation. If we come into our instance, I can then change those. So make it lower, I make them a bit higher. If we, I would prefer to have them very subtle, like a minus three maybe. 
that way it gets to fill up the gaps if we were to paint this on a mesh that doesn't have the poly count go into here scale that up pop it over here pop the text urban uh, here on that mesh paint make sure you select this one paint if I were to paint in here, I can only paint the corners because obviously that's only where the vertices are. So I guess it gives you a nice fade. But as you can see, if I wanted a part on the middle, I can't. Whereas if I've got more polys, I could do that freely. Again, I'll be making another tutorial, basically a more advanced version of this. But for now, this is a simple way to do it. And it's the one I've been using at the moment for my arcade scene. Alternatively, you could always make it white texture instead. Take your swap between, you can make it so it's got a low roughness, and you can uh, make it bump outwards, and you kind of get snow. Not using a texture, which will probably work better, which just means you've got to swap between the texture for coming to the actual material that I quickly made for it. It's essentially just a copy of the last one, but all I've done is I've put white instead of um, a darker version of the original, made it have one roughness so it's not shiny. And I basically went into, so you, um, earlier I said about adding this, you don't even need this. What you could have done to change that going in and out was you could have simply just changed the value on this. The reason I changed it is because I prefer minus, meaning it's going in, and plus, meaning it's coming out. See what I mean? And then yeah, you could just bump it's coming outwards instead of inwards. And you've got a basic snow as well. So, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed I hope some of you who did come over to the other video who was confused to why the other one wasn't working has now got it working. And I'll catch you guys next time.